Pad 4 and Jenny 4 has been designed to improve the location of utilities and reduce the number of utility strikes. Radio detection have utilized over 30 years of experience in the location industry and listened to the end user, incorporating features that make a difference and resulting in a simple use, improved safety for operators, less utility damage and saving time and reducing costs. There are numerous features that have been developed to make the operators work fast and efficient. The signal can be fed to the line in three ways. Direct connection, signal clamp and inducing the signal by placing the transmitter over the target line. The signal is directed vertically down to the ground so that mainstream is reaching the structures directly below. The signal can be amplified to a 1 watt when necessary. That is a powerful feature in case of environments of high resistance. The best locating results, however, are to be achieved by feeding the line directly. This is done by attaching the red end to the utility, making sure that there is a good connection. In the places where crocodile clips cannot be used, the ultra-strong magnet can be used. The black end should be earthed. This can be done by sticking the earth stake into the ground, it is recommended that the stake is placed as far away from the utility line as possible and, in order to assure good connectivity, some water should be poured around it. The quality of signal propagation will be heard by the sound the transmitter is emitting. The lower the sound, the better the connection and thus more signal travels along the line. It is not recommended to use common ground or stick the stake too close to the line. The receiver is fitted with numerous features that make the operator's life easy, and they are the dynamic overload protection that allows the operator to work in heavily congested areas where the intensity of signals simply disable other locators, making them useless. This is the background feature, so the operator does not even know when it works. Another feature is called strike alert. It is very useful since it warns the operator against shallow laid cables carrying main signals, that is, 50 Hz of frequency. The receiver can work in four modes, power, radio, jenny, and avoidance scan. Power and radio modes are called passive modes since they utilize the existing signals. Due to the safety reasons, it is not recommended to look at the display all the time, especially while locating on the busy road. Therefore, Radio Detection have developed audio features that help locating utilities in various modes by sound only. In power mode, the audio will emit the 50 Hz sound which will be heard as an unpleasant buzz. The radio will reflect frequencies ranging from 15 to 30 kHz which will resemble tuning of an old lamp radio receiver. These features were called real sound since they closely resemble the sounds of the frequencies they trace. Jenny is an active mode, which means that the signal must be prompted by the generator and fed onto the line. Once the signal is present in the line, the receiver can pick it up and the utility can be located. Jenny 4 has been fitted with two frequencies being emitted simultaneously. Apart from a standard 33 kilohertz frequency, there is also another high frequency, which allows to locate thin telecom cables placed in the close neighborhood to thick pipelines. Before this was introduced, the cables were easily emitted since they remained in the shadow of a much greater structure. This feature was called dual frequency. Both frequencies are naturally present, both on the transmitter and the receiver. Avoidance scan is the combination of all three modes together. There are utilities which can be located in just one of the modes. Operator should sweep the area using each mode in order to make sure that the area is safe before digging. Avoidance scan allows the operator to use all three modes simultaneously. That saves a lot of time. The microphone can be detached from the receiver once the background noise is so loud that the sounds produced by the receiver cannot be heard. Please note that the sound is pretty loud, so the operator must be really careful and not place the microphone too close to the ear before the speaker sounds. The dual frequency can also be heard since the higher frequency makes a higher pitch sound which is easily recognizable from the low pitch 33 kilohertz standard frequency. Yet another useful feature is the swing control. 
The utility should be located with the locator pointing down, as close to the 90-degree angle as possible. Too sharp angles can mislead the operator, who can either locate the utility wrongly or simply miss it. The swing control will inform the operator that the unit has exceeded the recommended angle at which location should be carried out. CAT4 has been fitted with numerous features that support the management of the units owned by the company as well as teams using them. The software that is used to control the units is called CAT Manager. It gives the operator the knowledge needed to manage the use of the instruments, ensuring the best use of them. First use of the software will prompt setting up a user account. Once this is done, four tabs appear. Software, Data Log, eCal, Account Details. Here, all the settings can be viewed. If there is a need, the settings can be adjusted. In the first table, there are all the adjustments such as power frequency. There is a choice between 50 and 60 Hz, enabling or disabling of the data logging. The data logging gives the manager opportunity to check if, when and how the unit was used. All crucial parameters are recorded every second, so the manager can track the way the unit was used. In the GCAD version, it is even possible to view where the unit was used against the actual map. The next chart shows the current software version. Then there is the internal clock in comparison with the system clock of the server. In the last chart, there is a feature called CalSafe. This shows the due date when the unit should be calibrated. Once the CalSafe feature is activated, on the date given, the unit will be deactivated. 30 days prior to that, the unit will emit the countdown of the days before the due date. The number of days will flash each time the unit is switched on. Here, the actual usage of the locator can be tracked. The chart consists of numerous columns. The manager can select the columns according to his needs and demands. Here, a number of features can be selected. The columns can be chosen, the interesting data can be filtered out and the selected data can also be exported either to an Excel spreadsheet or, when the .kml option is selected, to Google Earth. Once exported, the area where the unit was used can be located on the actual map of the area. Each point carries all the gathered information which can be seen when expanding the recorded spots. Here, the manager can make sure his team is equipped always with the equipment that is always ready for work, assuring achievement of the best results. RD has developed an option of purchasing calibration credits. In the past, the locator had to be sent for calibration regularly. It was recommended to have it done once a year. The cost and inconvenience of having to send the unit for calibration was obvious especially that the RD lab found that the units do not tend to decalibrate for years. It was logical then to develop a tool that would allow to check the unit against the factory settings. Once they are OK, why send the unit? CalCert was developed. The only problem that was there was that the calibration key that was sent could have been used only for one unit. This problem has been removed by introducing calibration credits. At the moment, the manager can order a number of units even if he or she is not sure which unit will need to have the calibration test running in the first place. Finally, the current calibration certificate can be viewed. The last tab, called My Account, allows to manage the account details.